welcome to once again another episode of Leader Talk, where we discuss leadership mantras with role models from the world of corporate and sports. Two very special guests joining us on Leader Talk today. I'm very privileged to be joined by Gary Kirsten, the uh, coach of the Indian team when we won the World Cup famously in 2011, also the man who piloted South Africa to the number one test spot and a former international cricketer himself. And Pavan Goenka, President Automotive and Farm Equipment Sectors at Mahindra and Mahindra, a man who's been responsible in many ways for the rise of Mahindras. Thank you both very much for joining us here on Leader Talk. You know, Gary, I must start with you because it's a remarkable story. Uh, someone from South Africa comes to India and pilots India to this World Cup win and, you know, in some way you embrace India uh, in, in a quite remarkable manner and you take South Africa to the world number one test spot. So, what is your success mantra? <laughs> I think that's a difficult question and, and thanks for having me here. But it's, I, I don't think that you could unpack that in one or two sentences. But, um, you know, it's a massive privilege to be offered the opportunity to come here. I mean, I was a, an inexperienced coach um, when, I, when I joined the Indian team. And I think maybe that helped in many ways because I had no sort of reference point Re in terms of what vision I could map out for Indian cricket, um, especially when you had the likes of some uh, the Tendulkars, the Dravids, the Laxmans, the Donies in your midst. So, um, you know, it just presented with me with the opportunity to be very humble in that space and to really get to understand how the Indian players um, wanted to play and how they wanted to map out their, their next year or two. But, you know, two very different work cultures, I presume. South African work culture and the Indian work culture are two, are two completely different universes almost. How did you make that transition? What was it that was the most difficult aspect of adjusting to the work environment in India? Well, you're right. It were very, very different work cultures. And um, it was my responsibility to understand um, how to get the best out of the Indian players. So I guess I got to understand that the, the Indian way um, and what, how they wanted to play their cricket and it was a lot around flair and you know, just take it on, not, not too much thought, just, just really go play out there and, and, and don't give it uh, too much thought. <coughs> Whereas the South Africans are completely different. They love the structure and uh, I probably try to encourage those players to play with a bit more flair and a bit more freedom and, and to make their own decisions. So, I guess two very different ways. And I'm going to come to that in a moment, making that adjustment because Mr. Goenka, you also in a way had to make adjustments. Yeah, you spent more than a decade in the United States, almost 18 years working with companies like General Motors in Detroit. And then you come to work with a traditional Indian company and uh, in a sense perhaps had to make that adjustment as well. Working with the General Motors and Mahindras again must have been two different worldviews. Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, uh, that was 20 years ago. Uh, things have changed quite a bit in 20 years and today the work cultures are kind of uh, converging in many ways because uh, there's a lot of learning that, that we have had over the years from, uh, from various parts of the world. But yes, when I did come, there was a significant difference uh, that, I, that I noticed. But uh, I would also say that I was prepared. It was not like I didn't know what to expect in India. And being prepared helped me to, to sort of merge into this culture very well. The, the reason I'm saying this is because Mahindra's, as I said, was a traditional <coughs> company. You know, you associated Mahindra's with a good old Jeep. Absolutely. And suddenly you decide that you're going to become a new, almost a global brand. You're getting into SUVs, uh, new, new products. So it must have taken some kind of personal adjustment to lead a team in India compared to leading a team in the United States. Undoubtedly, undoubtedly. Uh, like, like you said, the, the biggest difference... Uh, at that time was the famous Indian Standard Time, uh, which meant that nothing starts on time, nothing ends on time. Uh, and, and that has improved quite a bit over the last 20 years. Uh, there was also a difference in the way people made commitments and kept commitments. Uh, I think in India, there's a culture of never saying no. So if you say, do this, yes, <laughs> it'll be done, without knowing whether it can be done or not be done. So that's a culture that India has. So in the beginning, to understand that if somebody said yes, it doesn't mean yes, uh, was, a, was a very big adjustment for me. I, I'm just wondering whether that's true of cricket as well. I mean, you know, uh, Mr. Goenka makes uh, Indian standard time, the idea that you've got to come on time. Was that one of the things that you taught the team that, look, you've got to bring a certain discipline and a commitment uh, to, to the way you play the game? You said you wanted them to enjoy the game and play with flair. Mm. Uh, but mm. was there also a certain discipline that you had to bring in? Yeah, no, not necessarily majorly around punctuality as, as one component of it, uh, because I think in the cricket 
context, you're forced to be on time. If you don't arrive at the cricket match, you're going to be, you're going to be in trouble. But I think uh, the one thing we really focused a lot on was our preparation and sort of um, matching our preparation and getting and getting to understand how important it was in the context of what you were going to do in a match. And um, we worked tirelessly on making sure that we prepared really diligently for for matches. And um, you know, I like to think that that was that was something that became a game breaker for us when I was with the team. But interestingly, as a coach, you seem to always stay in the background. I mean, we, you know, you, you were not someone who was out there, aggressively out there in the front. Was that consciously again done? I think, you know, my responsibility as one of the, of the leaders of the team was to bring, um, and not dissimilar to any organization, group of people or team, is to, is to move a group of people in the same direction. And I, I think that was one of my big responsibilities. There was. Uh, there is and always has been massive talent in the Indian team, but how could we move this talent uh, for one bigger cause? And um, I think we created that in a very special way. And it really, it was never about me standing on the parapet saying I had all the answers. I think we did it together. We worked out the answers together and under a great leader of, uh, with MS Dhoni, it was an ab absolute privilege to work um, three years under his leadership. But I, I, th I think we really established a a culture within the team that was for a bigger cause. You know, uh, Gary keeps using the word team and I presume that's the same word which will be used even by corporate uh, uh, leaders. I mean, yeah, I mean, because you know, we've been often a very individualistic society. Now, how do you create a team culture in an individualistic society? Presumably in corporate India, you have to lead from the front even as the coach can perhaps recede into the background. Well, Azib, that is uh, again a fairly big cultural transformation that has happened in India. Uh, as you have noted that Indians are great individually, but there is uh, this DNA of the teams not coming together. And I think the corporate world is focused very significantly in the last 20 years since the time that I have been observing it. How do you move from individual performance to teams, uh, uh, team alignment, team goals, uh, working together as a team, sharing responsibility. And I do think that we have made a significant uh, progress in that uh, as corporate India in all companies that I have noticed. And that's, uh, that's a fairly significant change in leadership style also as a result of that. I, I'm just wondering whether, it, it, you know, in that sense, is cricket different from other sports? Because, you know, you have football, for example, where you have, you know, Sir Alex Ferguson was for the longest time Manchester United. Players came in and went. In cricket, is the coach still, uh, can the coach afford to be larger than life? Or do you believe the coach necessarily must be someone who simply stays in the background and lets the players do the real work. I have a question mark as to whether any leader should be larger than life in any organization. And uh, you know, he, the leader's got to have presence, great presence. But um, I, I think the great leader, certainly in the, the research and understanding that I have of leadership, is your, your great leaders in corporate and in sport are, are, are stand up when it gets tough and they're present and they're visible when the going gets tough in the organization. But when things are going well, you don't really see them in many ways. And, um, you know, I, th I think it's a very healthy way of leading that they give credit to their people when things are going uh, really well. And, um, you know, someone, I, I, I was privileged to work with the MS Dhoni who was in many ways very much like that, very calm and cool and collected, but as soon as the pressure on, he stood up and there you saw him. Before you became coach, Greg Chappell, great Australian cricketer, but somehow there was a breakdown in trust between him and the Indian team and it didn't quite work out. And then with you, it was just the opposite. I mean, every Indian player I've spoken to says we trusted Gary implicitly. And, and then they lifted you on their shoulders when they won the World Cup. <laughs> so they, it was almost as if they'd adopted you. Uh, and, and, and there must have been something that you must have done to win the trust of all these players coming from very different, diverse backgrounds in India. I think it's a fantastic point and it takes time to, to build the trust of people and as long as they can see that your intent with each one of them is legitimate, that you actually want the absolute best for them um, as individuals and you are working tirelessly to, to make them the best that they can be, you know, then, then they will and they'll do anything for you. Um, even in the most pressurized moments, they'll do things that are out of their own character because they really want to, you know, honor the, the effort that you've put into them and the trust that they have for you. The reason I'm asking you this is, you know, Indian cricketers are larger than life in themselves. I mean, they're all icons, you know, they are the, the heroes of mm. our time. Now, how do you bring them down to earth? Uh, it, it couldn't have been easy, uh, given the kind of adulation that they get on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Well, I think that was one of my big responsibilities. If I was going to add any value to Indian cricket, um, we would need to be operating as a group of people, as a unit for one cause, for a bigger cause, other than their own individual brands. And it seems to, they seem, and maybe it's just this, this, this new time in Indian cricket where they seem to have eroded that whole individual brand thing. I get the sense when, I, you know, when I'm watching and you know, I think that's particularly exciting. You, you think that's happened in corporate India as well? You think companies, as I said, old companies like Mahindra's and you've been fortunate with Anand Mahindra, perhaps someone who's also thought in, in, in terms of team building, in terms of building Mahindra's as a global brand. Have you, do you believe that that's been the big change in a sense that's taken place, that Indian companies also now think team? Well, uh, undoubtedly. Uh, in fact, uh, in a way, the rebuilding of corporate India started in about 91. Uh, yes. when uh, when sort of the company came to a brink of disaster and many of the leaders like Anand Mahindra and many more uh, took on the mental of saying I'm going to have to change the corporate uh, the, the way corporate India works uh, uh, move towards uh, setting goals differently move towards looking for different objectives move towards building team move towards learning how to lead how to manage uh, this company and, and become more meritocratic perhaps because absolutely you know, undoubtedly uh, undoubtedly uh, one is meritocratic other is uh, becoming more ambitious. Uh, we were in the old days happy with the Hindu rate of growth, the so-called, uh, and now now we've become a lot more ambitious, not happy with just growth in our own country here, looking to see how do we expand outside uh, and do it in a way that brings, brings the best of uh, India and the best of the Western culture and the way we adopt uh, uh, the new companies that come in our, come in our fold. And I like uh, what Gary said that for a leader, one of the things that has to be is that you have to have a super superordinate goal that you go after. And if you don't have that goal, if you only think about I'm going to make my team win, if though my only goal is to get so much profit uh, improvement or so much uh, top line improvement, so much market share, that's not superordinate. That's not going to excite uh, a larger mass. So you have to create that goal and align your team to that bigger goal uh, than, than, than what you see in immediate one year, two years. And that's what will then help to get people to follow you and align with you and, and, and understand where you're going. You know, that's fascinating. Let me, let me take a break at, at this point because there's plenty more to talk to you, particularly how do you deal with adversity, a point that I think we need to emphasize to our viewers. Let's take a break at this point. When we return, plenty more on Leader Talk with uh, Pavan Goinka and Gary Kirsten. Welcome back once again to Leader Talk, where we are discussing leadership mantras with two very successful people. Gary Kirsten, the much acclaimed coach of the Indian cricket team and international cricketer from South Africa, and Pavan Goenka, President, Automotive and Farm Equipment at Mahindra and Mahindra. Let me discuss one aspect which often doesn't get talked about enough, which is adversity. When you, for example, coached the Indian team or even the South African team, you've gone through ups and downs. The South Africans haven't won that mm. big occasion that we are still mm. waiting to see whether they will win or mm. not. The Indian team won as much as, as they lost when you started off. Mm. How difficult is it as a coach, as a leader, to deal with the tough days? Well, I think that's where it's important as a leader that you're consistent as a person, that um, you know, they don't, your, your people don't see that in the, in the result that you can be swayed emotionally. And um, I've worked really hard on being in a very unemotional space, um, especially after results. And we were, we were having results sort of, you know, every two to three days. And um, it was very important to me that I didn't uh, reflect or debrief on a, on a particular game straight after the, the day's play. Um, that I slept on it and just had some time. I often find that when, if I needed to do a debrief, I did sleep on it, um, I would be looking at solutions rather than looking at what the problems were and what went, what went wrong. So for me, it was very important that the players saw in me a, a calm space that, that they might have seen a bit of disappointment that we hadn't achieved what we want to but that um, I was certainly looking, looking to the next game. So in a sense, adversity rather than treated as a crisis is also an opportunity to actually solve issues. Absolutely, it's my opinion that I think that's where you get your greatest learning, that every team and I guess every organization has to go through those difficult times because I think that's where we really listen, we ask questions and we want to, you know, we want to make improvements on the situation. So we're really attentive to 
um, to looking for ways to improve. You know, uh, Mr. Goenka, we're, we're now going through an economic slowdown. We're hearing even in the automotive sector, <coughs> companies are cutting back. Now, in times like that, how do you then inspire a team? How do you endure the tougher times to convince people that the good times will follow? So, uh, I think uh, true worth of the leader really shows up at the time of uh, adversity when things are not going well. And uh, I, I've said before that a slowdown is a terrible thing to waste. Uh, because that's when you really uh, uh, fix the problems that you kind of ignore when things are going very well. You kind of accept certain uh, compromises. Uh, okay, it's okay to let's do it that way. Everything is going well. When it's difficult time, you you need to really think differently. So uh, the most important thing is that the leader himself cannot be stressed because times are tough. He needs to remain calm, composed, consistent. Uh, we should not start switching off light bulbs just because uh, vehicles are not selling and have. 2,000 watts uh, uh, when things are selling. I mean, there's no connection to it. Uh, so you need to remain calm, you need to remain consistent, and never, ever take short-term actions which will compromise the future. Because in auto industry, for example, our cycle is four to five years. And if we stop product uh, development today because things are bad, things are tough, what will happen four years from now when things are good? If you don't put in new plants today, what will happen three years from now when I need capacity? And therefore, the leadership has to have the courage in the time of slowdown to see the future, to convince the team of the future, and to say that, okay, we'll get over this thing, but let's really not compromise uh, with the, which was going to happen three years from you now. You know, both of you are, have mentioned at various stages in the interview the importance of being calm. I'm just wondering whether being calm comes from within. Uh, 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 are some people naturally <coughs> calm and others are not? Mahindra Singh Dhoni, for example, seems remarkably calm. I've often wondered. I mean, he hasn't done a professional course in Buddhism, <laughs> <laughs> but but he, you know, he just seems a very calm individual. Does does the calmness come from within? You're you're such a calm individual, uh, Gary. Where does it come from? I think we're just very good at hiding it. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think we're always calm. That's for sure. Um, but uh, but that's important to hide to hide being uh, you know even if you are agitated, you don't show it to your team. I think it's important that they that they see um, um, externally that the that the leaders looks like he's in a fairly good space, even though there's chaos inside. I think it's to manage your emotions is very important. Now I'm going to ask both of you this. I, I, let me start with you, the, uh, Mr. Goenka. In conclusion, you went to IIT. Uh, lots of young IITians today want to be entrepreneurs. Uh, what would your advice be to those who want to avail of the business opportunities that exist today that perhaps didn't exist when when you were passing out of IIT 20, 30 years ago? The first thing that I would say is that define your goal. What, are you, what is it that you're trying to achieve? Uh, and uh, do not uh, look for instantaneous success uh, because today some of the youngsters are looking to get there within two years and you cannot get there within two years. If you do, then you will get out of it within next two years. So, so take your time. Life still has 60, 70 more years left. Take your time. Define what you want to do. Go after that goal in a very consistent manner uh, and taking everyone along with you. And I'm going to ask you this, uh, Gary, because this is a cricket crazy country and lots of uh, young Indians will never get a chance of being coached by you. But if you had to give them one piece of advice, if, they if, you, if these young people wanted to fulfill their ambition of playing for India, what would that advice be? Well, very simple. I mean, I was very fortunate to have three years um, with probably the greatest batsman of the modern era in Sachin Tendulkar. And uh, I just had to watch him go about his business after playing international cricket for well over 20 years. So my advice would be to a youngster is Sachin Dindulkar train, I think, as hard as, as he would when he started out playing. So he never stopped learning. So the passion uh, was there till the very he end. He loved the game of cricket to its core. He never stopped learning and he kept on asking questions about his own game. And this is a guy who, you know, when I was with him, Surya got over 90 international hundreds. You know, I know Mr. Goenka is a cricket fan and so am I. So I'm going to ask you in conclusion, when you won that World Cup, was there a tear in the eye at all? Uh, did you get emotional finally? Um, it, was a, it was a great moment. It was lovely to be part of it. It was a fantastic memory and a very special memory and it brings me back to India um, regularly. Um, but um, it was a little bit embarrassing, to be honest, to be lifted on the shoulders of the Indian players. Um, but I, I respected it and, 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 and certainly it was a privilege. You know, as I said right from the outset, fantastic three years to be here with the Indian team and, and many cherished memories. Well, uh, 
Gary Kirsten Pavan Goinka, it's been a privilege and a pleasure talking to both of you and uh, both of you sharing your leadership mantras for our viewers. Thank you very much for joining us on Leader Talk. <coughs> that was Leader Talk. Every week we will bring you leaders from the world of corporate India as well as the sports world to share what it takes to be a true leader. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.